Okay, welcome to our video on graphing basic equations. So here's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to look at equations like y equals, I don't know, 4x plus 1. We're going to plug them into a table, a table looking like this with x and y values, right? This is typically how we go about doing this. And then we're going to graph it on a coordinate grid, an x and y axis. So we're going to have an equation, a table, and a graph. And I'm going to talk about some of the basic connections between each of these as we solve them. So, so what's happening? Well, here's an equation with two variables, right? y and x. Basically what this is saying is that y equals 4 times whatever x is plus 1. So what can x equal? Well, the fun part is that x can really, you know, it can equal any real number and plug it in here. So we can pick anything. So we want to pick something that's negative, maybe a zero value and something that's positive to get a sense of what's happening. It's usually a good strategy. Pick something negative, let's say negative one. Pick something neutral like zero and pick something positive. Let's try one. The idea is that you're going to plug those values into this equation. So where this x is, right, in the first case we're going to say pretend x is negative one. What's going to happen? What's y going to equal? Okay, and then we're going to plug in 0. What's y going to equal? And then we're going to plug in 1. Well, what is y going to equal? Well, if you plug in negative 1, that means 4, right, times negative 1, which is negative 4, plus 1, which is just negative 3. So we're saying here, okay, if you plug in negative 1, you get negative 3 for y. What happens if you plug in 0 for x? Well, 4 times 0 is just 0. Plus 1 is 1. And then lastly, what we have here, plug in 1. Okay, so 4 times 1 is just 4, plus 1 is 5. So really what we're doing here is we're building coordinates, right? This first coordinate is negative 1, negative 3. The second one is 0, 1, right? That's our x and y value. And the third one is 1 and 5. Now a fun thing to think about here, I'm not going to talk about it too much, but we only need two points to really set up a line or determine a line. Once we have two points, we're done. But I, I think three is a good safe number to really get a sense of what's happening. So here's our x and y axis. We need to graph this, and I notice my highest y value is five. So let me go up to five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. My lowest x, my lowest y value, excuse me, is, is negative three. Right? This is the origin, zero. So negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay, the x value just goes from negative one up to one, so so one zero negative up uh, negative one zero one. So let's graph these points. The first point is negative one negative three. So I go left once on the x-axis and down three times on the y-axis. There it is, negative one, negative three. The next point is zero one. So I don't go anywhere on the x-axis, but I go up one on the y-axis. Let me move this label over here. Sorry, negative one, negative three. Here, this one will be zero, one. And then you can already see this line forming. We have one, five up here. So using my line tool, we can sketch out a graph of this line. It's a little bit off because my drawing's off, but there it is. Now, what's this saying? Well, this is saying that we have this line, which is a relationship between x and y. This line is basically the solution set or the all the relationship numbers between x and y. So if we can, you know, we can look further ahead in the line or further back and we can quickly say that if I, let's say I pick two or one and a half, this is one and a half, for x, what's y gonna be? We'll look up at the line. The y value would be the height at that point. So this line tells you what the y value is for any x. You could choose anything you want and look at the line, and there it is. So that's why I think these lines are just so great, because it just describes this singular relationship between an x and a y in terms of a picture. You're seeing all the possible answers to this equation. And of course, it's infinite. It goes on forever, right? Especially in this case, we're not restricting it at all, because any x value you pick would make a new y value. But it doesn't matter what x value you pick, right? Anything you pick will fall on this line. The y value will fall on this line right here. And the reverse is true. Any y you pick, 
right? And plug it in that y value in here that would create an x value that's on this line. So that's that's a, a great relationship. Let's look at, at two more. Let's make sure we add in some other values. Let's try fractional stuff. What if I have y equals one half x plus six? Well, again, let's do the same thing. Let's set up our table. All right, we have our x y table. We'll plug in a negative, a neutral, and a positive value. And then we'll get our y values from that. And then we'll set this all up on an x, y axis to see how this looks. Just to get a sense of what's going on, right? Because the, the important part is that these kind of equations can be represented as a picture. So let's plug in negative 1. Negative 1 times a half. That's right, we're plugging in negative 1 for x over here. That's negative 1 half. Negative 1 half plus 6 is what? Well, negative 1 half plus 6, you can think of 6 minus a half. And that gives us 5 and a half, or 5.5. 0, if we plug in 0 here, things are nice and easy because a half times 0 is 0. Add 6 to that, we get 6, right? 0 plus 6 is 6. Now, lastly, we plug in this 1 as x. And a half times 1 is just a half, plus 6 is 6 and a half. So now we have three points that can set up our graph. And, and I notice that my y values are all positive, and we go on, if I think we go in increments of a half, we can set up a fairly accurate picture. So let's go up by halves. We have um, one half and one, right? One and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six. Oh boy. And then six and a half would be next, but we definitely ran out of room there. Let's. Sorry about that. Let me. Now, when this happens, actually, you know, this actually happens to me all the time. I don't think ahead. Um, here, I clearly need a lot of room on my y axis in the vertical direction. So when I set this graph up, it's okay. It doesn't have to look like a perfect, ba perfectly balanced x and y axis, right? I could show more of the y axis to make this fit. And that's what I should have done in the first place. So here's a half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. Four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, right? Here is 5.5, .5. here's six, and then there's 6.5. I think I did that right, right? Half, one, one and a half, two, three, four, five, six. I did it right. Okay, great. And the x axis, we have one, zero, negative one. Okay. So now, again, these are just points, right? The first point is negative 1, 5.5. So we go negative 1 and then all the way up here at 5.5. Our next point is at 0, 6. 0 up to 6. And then here, we go 1, 6.5. Now, what you might notice is something about the steepness of this line. Before, right, our, our, steep, our line was much steeper, right? Maybe let's say, you know, something a little bit more like, like this, right? That's just a rough estimation because, uh, actually, I'm tired. I can't even think of the last equation I wrote. But here, I do remember it was steeper in a, in a way. And this is the basic idea of slope. If you look at the slope of a line, you compare how steep they are. And, you know, not to give too much away, or but I'm just going to say that this number really is what's changing here, Right? This half was less than our other, our other value in this spot, and we call this value the slope, right? This tells us how steep the line is going to be. So just take a look. I mean, you can, you can get a sense that this this line, the green line over here, has less of a slope, like on a mountain, is less steep because this number was less than the number before. So start to get that intuition that this number tells us about the steepness of our line. But let's let's get crazy here. Let's switch it up. What if we have a negative value, like y equals negative 2x plus 1? What is that going to mean to have a negative slope, right? Because this, this number is going to talk to us about how the line is, how steep it is. Well, let's set up our table, and I, then I think this will all make sense. So we have our x and our y values in our table, and we want to plug in some basic values. Let's spread it out a little bit. Instead of negative 1, 0, and 1, 
Let's try negative 2, 0, and 2. So how do we plug in negative 2? Well, that would mean negative 2 for x times negative 2. What's negative 2 times negative 2? Well, that's positive 4. Plus 1 is 5, so that's our first point. Negative 2, 5. Plug in 0, we get 1, right? Because 0 times negative 2 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Lastly, we want to plug in 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, right? Plus 1 is negative 3. You can check that on your number line if you want. Now we're going to graph this, and we're going to really try to focus on what it means to have a negative slope. Again, my y values go from negative 3 to 5. So maybe something like this. Leave a little bit more room up here for the positive side. y and x. Here's 1, 2. 1, 2 in this direction for my x values. 1, 2, 3. Right, negative 3 is down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's plot these points. First we have what? Well, negative 2, 5. So we go negative 2 and then up 5. There's our first point. And then we have 0, 1 right here. And then we have 2, negative 3. So go 2, negative 3. So here we have this negative number here. It's a, the difference. And something about this tells us our negative slope. Well, if you look at this, the slope, right, in one sense, if we go from left to right, we're going down a mountain, for example. That means we have a negative slope. And that stands in direct contrast to what we had before, right? With our, our last one, it looks something, I think, like, you know, up here about, right? That slope was, was positive. So in that, you know, in one way, if we go from left to right, we can think of that slope as being positive or going up the mountain. And, you know, the key, eventually, don't get stuck looking at these things from left to right. That'll kind of slow you down here. But, but look at them both ways. But we're just pointing out that if you start at the left and go to the right, you can see that negative slopes go down and then positive slopes go up. So there's the idea of negative slope and positive slope as somehow being related to down and up. And that's just you know, a start to the intuition we need to deal with these kind of problems with slope and, and lines. Anyway, I hope this helped.